Hi, this is David Golly. This is part two of um, my Autodesk Revit architecture um, video, and um, I'm just going to continue on. Okay, previously in part one, we had looked at um, the user interface. We'd looked at um, creating levels, the project browser, adding in a wall uh, detail, adding in some foundation, and adding in some walls. I'm going to zoom in here, and um, I'm going to use the align tool to actually align and lock this wall in. And I'm going to put on my thin lines um, so I can see this align. And I'm going to go to modify. And we've got a great tool in here called align. I'm going to pick my plaster face that I want to align to. And the adjacent and the adjacent uh, plaster face I want to lock, align up uh, against that. So I'm going to click on it. I can hit the lock symbol and it will physically lock it in position. So what that means is if I physically move that cavity wall, um, this block work will move with it. You just need to be careful that uh, I will also need to align and lock it to the foundation as well at the bottom. Um, other things we can do in here is we can swap out these wall styles. So I can select them up, go to the properties, say they're not structural walls. I'm just going to simply add them as a 75 partition stud. Again, I can click and actually start dimensioning. Detail and change that very easily. Um, I'm going to add some more walls in. I'm going to do it on the fly. So I'm going to select that existing stud wall, right click. I'm going to go create similar. So it brings in that exact same wall style. And again, I'm just gonna simply nip that wee corner out and add that area in there. So it's very easy and very intuitive on the screen. So I've got my walls the way I want them um, approximately for this exercise. I'm gonna load up some door styles. So we go to home, we can head on door. Um, we've got some doors that were contained within the template. I want to load some doors. And doors are external families, so you can download them from Autodesk. Seek. You have a, an extensive door range from the library. Uh, you can go to sites like Revit City as well, and you can share it with other users and other Revit users. Um, so I'm going to go to Load Family. Um, it's taken me to my US catalog directory. I don't want that. I'm based in the UK, so I'm going to go into UK. I'm going to go into Doors, and I'm going to have a look at my internal doors. So I'll get a nice preview of all different door styles. So I can pick up the door that I want. I'm going to use that internal one. And I'm going to head open. It's going to load the door um, into the file. So again, you can see my level of detail of the door coming in. I can simply put it in position. And I'm just going to start detailing around these doors. As the door comes in, the dimension comes in. You can click on the dimension and actually type in the distance. Again, with the door, you can hit the space bar to flip. Um, but this can all be changed very easily. I'm hitting the space bar again after. You'll see the automatic numbers coming in the doors because I've got the tag on placement. And again, that tag will be anchored physically to the door in there. Um, so let's just add a few more of these in. Like so. Okay, if I have some external doors I want to add in, I can go into load family again. Uh, again, it's taken me to my UK catalog. I can change that on the options. I'm going to go to doors. And we'll have a look for some external doors. And we'll scroll down and we'll try and find the type of door that we want. And we'll head open. So we'll take those double doors. So let's populate these double doors in here at the front. Again, we'll put a set of double doors here. I might get a soft warning here. Let me know that um, I need to change my wall. That's fitted in. But again, uh, that's very easy to swap out and change. And that's part of the design process um, and using Revit. Um, so I've started to populate my doors within the drawing, I'm quite happy with that. Um, all my section information will be fully updated, so if I double click on my section again, you'll see my doors coming in my section. I can simply click on my section and I can change this in the section view. In Revit we say a change in one view represents a change in all views, so it is live detail that's actually physically coming across. You can see my block works tying in my finished floor level, so I've got confidence that that information is building up in the background. Okay, let's load some windows. So I'm gonna to go to window. We're gonna to go to load family. Um, I'm gonna load a UK window style in here. So let's pick one. Um, I'm gonna use the SEO detail, it's a Scottish NCAP detail. It's got a cavity closure. So I'll pick the type that I want. Hit open, pick the size, and let's um, put these, some of these windows in. So I'm gonna quickly go around the drawing in here. Um, so I've got a couple 630 windows. So let's populate these over here. Like so. And again, you can see the sill to the outside. If the, the sill's on the wrong position, again, you can flip it. You can see in here when I'm actually um, hovering and moving, um, but one window over here is on the wrong position. You can select it and actually flip um, 
the direction or you can flip the hinge uh, so to speak off um, again I can load some more windows up in here so let's just go to load family need some larger sizes so we'll go to the UK again and a smart way to do this would have these preloaded in your template I'm sure you, you would work with a lot of common window styles so you'd simply have them preloaded so we need some larger window details in here Again, it's going to load it up in the file, and that means I can start using it. Um, we've got our cell height and head, or we've got our um, cell height and head height that we can physically change. Again, we can change that level of detail, and then um, we can put in our window styles. Um, I'm not, I'm not using my dimensions, but as they come in, the dimension is there, so I can actually put it into my standard brick dimensions if I physically calculate it out. Uh, but I'm just going to be generic about this um, and work my way around the building. Okay, so I've got some window positions in. I'm starting to build my model up um, rightly. Um, what I might want to do is look at actually creating maybe a bit of a stairwell in here um, or an opening. Um, well, what we can do for the opening, um, we can simply select the wall style that we want to make an opening out of and we've got an edit profile. So I go to edit profile, the lines will turn magenta. This really is a sketch mode in here. Now, typically I would do this in a section view, but um, rather than create the section, I'm, ha I'm confident enough I'm going to do it in 3D. So I've got my sketch tools in here, and I can start sketching. Um, I'm going to pop out to an arc. And again, we'll add that arc in, and I'm going to click back to the line. Now, what's quite important at this point is I need to split this magenta line here. So we've got a split tool, we've got a new split um, with gap tool that's actually available now in the software. I think it'll simply say split it here and here. And this line here we don't need, I'm going to hit finish. Um, I'm going to click the tick to say I've finished with that wall style, finish editing, and I'm happy enough for that, that's as expected in there. Um, okay, maybe I need to add a stairwell detail in here. I might need to pop out some windows. You can see they're very easy to change. You can change the position of the window in here. Maybe I need to nip that 500mm. Again, I can delete out any windows that I physically don't want. Um, so if I need to add a stairwell in here, um, what I can actually do is um, go to my stairs. So I've got my stairs. Um, I've got various types of stairs um, from the library. Uh, or within the um, file that we can actually use. Stairs are system families. We talked about this in part one. A system family be, would be the likes of a slab, a wall, or a staircase that's contained within the template. Doors and windows you would physically load. So um, with the staircase, we've got a run, a boundary, and a riser. Um, and you can actually simply start um, sketching the staircase as appropriate, and you can hook in to um, your point as desired. So you can see it's actually hooked into this point here where it will automatically start the riser and leave the brick there. So we've got our boundary and um, we've got our risers in here and we've got our physical run. Um, I could be happy with that but I might want to change my level of detail but we can edit it after. So I'm going to hit finish um, and just to show that Revit physically properties very similar as AutoCAD you can simply select up these objects you can use commands that you'd be familiar with if you're an AutoCAD user like move and I can simply move to that plaster finish. So that's something that I can do after the object's physically in. If I need to edit or change the level of detail in here I might need to change this riser. And A common example I would use is if I edit the sketch I can delete out that bottom riser and I can add a curved um, tread into that. So if I say start um, end radius Oh, if I do that for my riser, sorry, I say start and radius, I can define my radius. Um, I know it's my riser because it's black, that's quite important. I can simply hit click the tick and I can finish that level of detail off. And that's important for cutting out um, or adding in custom risers or cutting out boundary conditions in there, say for structural objects. Okay, so we're starting to build our model up um, in here um, from a, a level of detail point of view. So maybe we had some uh, column details that we need to add in. So we've got structural columns, we've got architectural columns. Um, structural columns I've covered in some of my other videos, um, and certainly in Revit Structure. But you know, we can add in our architectural column in here, and we can pick various sizes. And I, I can hook these in, I could maybe be using the structural engineer's grid, etc. And again, I can populate it. And you can see what it's going to do, it's going to physically obey my brickwork in there, or my block work, and it's going to put that detail in against the likes of my plaster. So that's, that's a nice feature again, we can actually change, you know, we've got some maybe 
um, structural columns in here, etc., that we need to add in. And again, we can actually change the uh, size and detail in that. So these structural columns we can simply add in. Again, you can see them coming in uh, from a 3D point of view. Okay, if we need to get this uh, level of detail up for to another level, um, so if I have a look at uh, my north and my south and my east views in there, you can see my level of detail um, for my elevations. Again, I said earlier on that we can change the scale in here. Um, I also talked about um, a change in one view representing the change in all views, so I can physically change my door in this view very easily. Um, I can add the likes of my realistic colours in here, I can add a sun path and shadow etc in. But what I really want to do is copy um, this floor plan up, because I need to use this as a template as my um, existing floor. So what I'm going to do in my plan view is I'm going to window all the objects. I've got a very handy tool up here called filter. I'm going to filter out the objects that I don't want. And I'm going to clear them all. I'm going to say, well, look, I want my doors. Take them back in. I want my floors. Um, and I want my walls. And I want my windows. Now, I realize that some of the detail I'm going to delete out. But that's fine. And I'm going to hit OK. And um, what we can do now is we can physically copy the clipboard. As soon as we copy the clipboard, we get a paste. And I can say paste align to selected levels. Again, it's a common way to work. I have to work out what level I want to use. Well, I'm happy enough because I want to use my first floor. So I'm going to hit OK and it's physically going to paste that into my first floor. I'm going to get an error. That's OK because that's because my walls in here, my external uh, cavity walls, don't forget earlier on, we had actually had um, them working down the foundation. They're very easy to change. Again, you can select your walls. Um, physically in there and um, you could use your filter or what you could actually do is just pick them up I'm holding down my control key so I'm picking up my cavity walls in here and I'm going to say there is no base offset so I'm going to hit that zero and I'm going to hit apply and um, the reason we had that earlier on is that was simply to do with our foundation so I'm going to delete out the detail obviously that I don't want and um, which would be my um, external doors in here and maybe I need a bit of cleanup internally, how it's going to look from an upstairs point of view. Again, we can easily clean this up. So these walls in here, I'll show you how to clean this up in the next video. Um, um, that will be the part three video, and we're going to actually create a cut in that floor slab. We're going to do a wee bit of tidy up and clean up, and we're going to start to work our way up to the roof. So thanks very much, and don't forget to have a look at uh, part three of the video.